over in the corner of my kitchen and you can see this big fat crack that's uh, going from the top of this door jam over there and now that crack has been there for a while it's gotten worse and I got this new crack that's kind of moving that way which means something is shifting in my foundation okay from the outside that crack in the kitchen is about right there and here's where the downspout is and there's the kitchen window and here's the crawl space and all this stuff has gotten loose and I needed to check my sprinkler system and I want to relocate it farther apart from my house because I thought I might have had a water problem and in the process of doing that I found the nature of the problem originally when they did this little landscaping and this rock work they they put the earth in leveled it out they didn't tamp it down they put plastic down they put a little bit of rock down and then as time went on the the whole thing settled down and they kept adding rock and I know the lady that lived here before me uh, there was some landscape uh, bills and the paperwork that I got that showed she had paid a lot of money for the sprinkler system and they probably added more rock in here and that didn't solve anything it looked like everything was graded away from the house when I purchased the house I was careful about that type of thing but I did not dig up the rock and and inspect it and indeed I believe that is what happened so in addition to that there's only was the two downspouts on opposite sides of the house and the gutters couldn't handle big rains and it would come in here and then it would run back and of course this stuff is just sort of this crawl space access access is just kind of a pretty shoddy thing kind of an add-on thing later Ugh. back it up beep 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 <laughs> so Anyhow, when I got down here, and I've known about this for a long time, but it really got worse. Uh, there's cracks here. This this stuff is cracking, and I got cracks that go all the way up and all the way down. And obviously, things are moving. And now this house has all houses in the front range of Colorado on the east. This would be the eastern slope. This is on the east side of the Continental Divide. We have a bentonite problem here. Bentonite is a type of clay that as long as the moisture contain, content is stable, it doesn't move. If it's dry, it shrinks, and it will stay that way. But you introduce water, and it expands a outrageous amount. And it's a constant battle for all the contractors and builders. Always has been in Colorado in the Denver area so what have I done to alleviate the problem I've been very careful and I added that center downspout to carry water away and it's been that way for a few years but the house dropped and shifted I took this jack off my cherry picker I put this six inch square like you know beam landscaping beam whatever it is I only know where I got it uh, and I took this other large piece, put a piece of steel I had up here, and I, I was able to pick up three joists. I couldn't get it. I didn't want to take all this plumbing out of here. There's a gas line that goes to the water heater, which is up above. And uh, so what I did is I bought this 10-footer of uh, pressure-treated pine, and I laid it down here. And I leveled it up, and it, obvious it wasn't level on the top of this footer. When they built this cinder block wall, they just added their mud, and you know they use a string and they get it figured out. But uh, the footer isn't always, you know, perfectly level, uh, which is to be expected. So I got some high density machinist grout for columns and all kinds of stuff. It's like uh, 14,000 psi stuff. Um, and I, I put it down. Instead of trying to push it in underneath, I just built it up real high and, and laid it down. Because it's almost on the foundation. It is on the foundation there. But at this end, I'm up like an inch and a quarter. So I, I made it high. And then I put my level on there. And I, I tapped, tapped it down. And I got it 
uh, somewhat leveled up. This is pressure treated pine. These two supports come down in the footer. They're pressure treated pine. I use clips on all of my vertical studs on the top and the bottom and I use these cool deckmate screws with the T25 uh, bit. Oh, I love those. It works so good. And uh, so everything's secured. Everything's plumb. The, fl the floor is flat upstairs in the kitchen. This is flat. It's holding the weight now. The pressure's off the jack. And I'm a pretty happy camper. To deal with this particular span, there's a header here. I've got this mono pole. So if the furnace ever craps out, then I can, you know, bring the new one in and take the old one out and then put the monopole back in. I think that is a easy solution. Uh, all of these vertical studs I put directly underneath the floor joists. Then I have a double plate on top. So hopefully, if I'm doing something wrong, somebody will tell me. And uh, this is how I'm dealing with the problem. Uh, and then I'm going to put this insulation that I took off the walls. It was just hanging here. And I got some this white mold that just brooms off easy. So I'm going to get some... I'll broom that all down after I put a mask on. And then I'm going to spray uh, Clorox bleach full strength onto all the walls down here. I'm going to put the fiberglass back up. They did not use uh, any type of sealer on the outside of the foundation. And I don't know if it's worth trying to do something on the inside painting it or putting something on here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it. It's been this way for 50 years. It hadn't killed anybody yet. And uh, so then what I'm gonna do is put the fiberglass in there. Then I'm gonna got, get some of that inch and a half styrofoam with the foil backing. Instead of putting the foil against the wall, I want to fill this gap with the insulation. And then I'm gonna put the styrofoam up here with the foil to the inside that way it's washable um, it shouldn't get really dirty like this uh, all this fiberglass did it won't hold the the dirt and uh, I'll be able to come down here it'll reflect light and uh, should reflect heat back in here so I don't know if that's the right thing to do but uh, I thought that's what I would do. And I'm going to go all the way down the full length of the house. You can see, look how this, uh, this base footer, when I got that insulation off, you know, you can barely get the 2x4 on here. But down there, it looks like there's like 3 or 4 more inches. I could easily put two 2x4s two down there. And of course, before I, I did put this down, you have to go down here with a... A hammer and a chisel and get all this old mortar from when they were building the wall all that stuff fell down there and it's stuck so I'm trying to get down to the solid concrete then I'll vacuum it and get it perfectly clean and then I'll put my grout down and leave that set for at least three days to let it solid solidify real good and then I can I shouldn't have I should be done with the jacking part because this area back here uh, I'll check it as I go. It's okay. These uh, floor joists, they're not even the same width. Some of them are seven and a quarter inches. Some of them are seven. So I've had to take these, uh, I got this box of, of 10 pound box of shims. And I put these shims underneath that pressure treated pine to act like a vapor barrier between that concrete. Because concrete will hold moisture and wood will suck it up like a straw and it rots the wood so this is number one it's pressure treated pine and I've got it something to stop the moisture with these galvanized uh, clips there's there's galvanized ones and then there's big steel ones I had to put three of them on the back in order to get this to be level and up flush up there on the top and then I've got clips and screws on on everything I put these I put the bought these clips they're only like 78 cents and uh, then I got a box of these uh, deck screws uh, inch and a quarter long number eights and uh, that works out real good and they got the t25 heads on them I really like those it comes with a bit and man it makes it so much easier than trying to to go in with a 
Phillips or anything else. So that's what I'm up to. Uh, I'm on the downhill stretch. The I've been fo uh, trying to make a little video of this, but evident the first something was going on with the lighting or the battery was low because it was just wouldn't focus for some reason. Okay, that's it for for this Saturday. <laughs> And uh, I just wanted to show you guys what I've been working on and hopefully you'll get your projects done and don't be afraid. I was paralyzed in fear for quite a few years wondering what to do, hoping the problem would not get worse, hoping that it would just get a, go away. It started off as a hairline crack. It started off as door not closing properly in the house. And it's like, oh, what's going on with that? And then, you know, you adjust your doors and and you hear squeaks in the, the floor and stuff and like I said I've had I've had water in this crawl space and I had to pump it out I had a trench right in through here and it was full of water so I could set a pump in here and pump it out and it was right in front of the crawl space opening because I I would store stuff down here and I didn't I wanted a little bit more room so I could get in and out of here and I had that little trench and so I know water's gotten in here two or three times over the last 15 years and probably more than that before I bought the house that's 50 years old so hopefully I filled everything back in here and uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to do some stuff on the outside adding that extra downspout uh, moves the water away and I'm going to I'm going to do more excavation besides that later on and I got to redo my sprinkler system and maybe I'll just have a concrete patio poured back there clear across the back of the house and that'll yeah, so I have drainage away from the house so that might be enough to solve that problem so yep all just things you gotta tackle but you know it, sometimes if you look at the whole job it scares you so bad you just want somebody else to deal with it. I just happened to be in the kind of work where I was the guy stuck with having to deal with it and figure out a way of fixing stuff or do the work that somebody else suggested and sometimes I didn't think it was right but I had to do it the way some my boss told me to do it, right? I mean we all get in that situation so this is my house. I, I don't have a clock to punch. I don't have a deadline to meet and I have a problem and I'm addressing it and I probably will have the whole front and the half back and I will have less than five hundred dollars in material and if it has to be redone or other things done to it it you know it's not gonna be the end of the world um, what five hundred dollars that's a, a brand new counterweighted crankshaft and a set of connecting rods right <laughs> <laughs> gee that's that's less than a set of wheels and tires right so yeah I'll have myself a house that's worthy of living in that's straight and if I sell it to somebody I, I know I'm not selling them a big lemon you know I'll, I'll, uh, I'll know that when I left it, it the repair was done and it was done right and should last as long as you keep that water away from the clay so, sorry for babbling on. It's good to get down here where it's cool. And I always wanted to use my dad's level. And now I'm building something that I can do that. And it's, it's pretty neat, old school level. And I, I've got it right there where it needs to be. And I'm sure my dad's got his initials and his name there. And, and uh, yeah, it's probably a craftsman. It says Michigan. What does it say? Port Austin Level Tool Manufacturing Company, Michigan. That's where my dad was from, I think. He spent some time up there. Anyhow, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Um, hope you get your projects done. Get something done on them. Take care.